Warning, this episode contains adult language, mature situations, main characters with unique lineages, fantasy worlds that contain lizard mounts, political plots, sponge your house husband antics, and izakai tropes. Listener discretion is advised. Episode 328. Now that we're married, I'm going to sit on the couch. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Spark and Mong Review, some podcast and many reviews about connected enhanced narratives. It's your host, Zan, saying konnichiwa, aloha, bonjour, and what's up? Yes, we're back for another fun-filled episode of this wonderful podcast that's been around since 2008, and we're still chugging along, still going, and still kicking ass. Hope everyone who's listening to this is doing great and amazing as well. So... Before we get any further, let's get some of the housekeeping out of the way, shall we? Because if you're joining us for the first time, you're probably confused as what's going on. So let's get to it. So, Spyarkin is, like I said, some podcasts and making reviews about connected enhanced narratives. Pretty much what that means is every episode we talk about one to two different geek properties, depending on the show you listen to. And we tell you the pros and cons about it. Since this is the manga podcast, we talk about manga. And the pros and cons, how the art style is, the characters are, the plot motivation, and if it's worth investing your time in, or if you should avoid it like the plague. You have to agree with anything that I and my co-host say, we try to be educational, enlightening, entertaining, and most importantly, exciting. Now, you can listen to any of our earlier episodes at various podcasting aggregators like Stitcher, Spotify, Podcast Pickle, Apple Podcasts, Apple Music, etc. But you can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, and YouTube. And more importantly, we are on our own website, www.spirekin, that's S-P-I-R-A-K-E-N.com. We have our whole catalog of the last 11 years of podcasts with over 900 episodes and lots of really cool things you can check out there. Also, if you have any comments or concerns, you can email me personally at Zan, that's X-A-N, at Spirekin.com, or direct message me on Twitter, at Spirekin. Also, remember to follow us on Instagram and tag us if you see us at any conventions near you. Now, I think that's about it. Oh, yeah, definitely check out our YouTube channel where we have our panels up, finally. There was a little bit of a copyright issue where they were taken down because of issues, but they've been approved, so we have two episodes out that are really awesome one of them is our from under the bed horror and anime manga for otakon 2019 and the other one is a uh, whole new world isekai tropes for otakon 2019 definitely check it out so i think that's it for housekeeping rules so what else is going on with us in sparkin land well we have a theme month going on for our movie or sorry motion picture review we changed the title our motion picture review we're doing the month of heists Hijacking and High Octane Car Chases, our heist movie month. We had our first episode come out, which was The Town, and this week we're going to be reviewing a movie starring John Cleese called A Fish Called Wanda. Kind of excited about that. We're going to see how that turns out. Uh, Definitely check it out once we see the episode, because I've seen it, but Greta has not seen it. Now, I think that's it for plugging other things. We should get to the thing that a lot of people have been enjoying lately and they want to continue doing, which is... The manga releases for the week. Yes, because for some reason manga is released on Tuesday, so we're going to be talking about the mangas that were released yesterday, August 6th. And we got a doozy this week. We've got some really good titles and some really what-the-hell titles. Now, first one is we have Ten Dance Volume 4, which is a manga about dancing. Unlike our last episode where we talked about Welcome to the Ballroom, this is the one which is a little more kind of Yuri on Ice friendly, we could say. Uh, you have, again, Volume 10. I'm surprised that it's still going on. That's the one we talked about where guy goes back in time. And he ends up joining the shouting club to bring it back. And his friend also goes back in time and her life's been ruined. Uh, you have Al Haru Ride, Volume 6. Behind the Scenes, Volume 7. Black Torch, Volume 5. Devil's Line, Volume 13. Shokugeki no Soma, a.k.a. Food Wars, Volume 31. Hunter Hunter, Volume 36. Ideal Dream, Volume 6. Then JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Part 4, Diamond is Unbreakable, Volume 2. The one JoJo series that we've been stuck on because various reasons. Originally, Timbo was going to review it, and he never reviewed it. So it's been on the wheel of manga, and eventually we're going to review JoJo's Part 4. I promise you. Uh, there's My Hero Academia Smash, Volume 1, which is a spin-off series. I think it's the more the chibi version, but gotta check it out. There's My Hero Academia, Volume 20. My Monster Secret Volume 17, One Piece Volume 91. Yes, they're up to 91. How crazy is that, that One Piece is at 91? Uh, I don't think there's an end in sight. But 
Another Shonen series which is much better, which should have 91 episodes, One Punch Man Volume 17 comes out this week. You have Reincarnated as a Sword, the light novel of Volume 1. I've seen the manga on various areas. It seems intriguing. I don't know. It seems like it's like the sword's picked up by an orc, and then he just talks to the... It's like it's almost like the Reborn as a vending machine situation, where you have a strong girl has a, a new friend. You have Saint Seiya, Saint Dasho, Volume 7. Showman Sample, I was abducted by an elite all Girl School is a Sample Commoner, Volume 10. I don't know why that deserves 10. We've talked about this. I hate that series. It's so stupid. You have Shortcake Cake, Volume 5. You have Takane and Hana, Volume 10. You have The Promised Neverland, Volume 11. Still going strong. It's still an awesome series. There is the 8th volume of Tokyo Tarareba Girls. I haven't read that yet. I'm still trying to. The Boko Ben, We Never Learned, Volume 5 is coming out. Yokai Girls Volume 8, and finally the last new manga for the week, Yona and the Dawn, or sorry, Yona of the Dawn, Volume 19. So, we've got some very good titles. The ones that I'm excited about for this week definitely are Boca Ben Volume 5, Promised Neverland Volume 11, Saint Seiya, Saint the Show Volume 7, One Punch Man 17, uh, My Hero Academia 20, JoJo's Part 4, Diamond is Unbreakable Volume 2, and last, certainly not least, we got to go with Sungeki no Soma, Volume 31. All great series, all various titles. Let me know in the show notes what you are excited about from this week. I'm pretty intrigued to see what everyone's getting and what everyone's going to buy. Because we got to support manga, keep it going. So, definitely. And speaking of manga, let's get to the manga review of the episode, shall we? Because this one is a doozy. This one I found by accident. I'm a little intrigued and horrified by as well. Now... This manga was written by Tsunehiko Watanabe and illustrated by Hinotsuki Neko. It's published by Katakoa Shoten or released over here by Seven Seas Entertainment, so it's one of the more unique series out there. It is a seinen action-adventure comedy, isekai, slice-of-life, romance, fantasy series that was released in Young Ace all the way back in 2017, still coming out. There's six volumes of the manga, the light novel, there's nine, and obviously this the first two volumes of this series only cover the first manga. And the series we're talking about is Rizo no Hime Sekatsu, or The Ideal Sponger's Life. This is a series which is... Now, we talked a couple weeks ago about The Art of the House Husband, an amazing manga, which is about a Yakuza guy who became a house husband. And he is awesome and great, and he does so much stuff for his family. This is the exact opposite of that. This is about a guy who ends up married and he becomes a complete sponge, or tries to be. Well, let's set the stage for you. Our main character's name is Zenjiro Yamai. He's a salary man who's 26. It's his first day off in a month, and he's going to go relax. He bought himself a bento, and he bought himself some movies. He's going to have a day where he has no problems. He's riding his bike home, and suddenly, poof, he ends up in a mysterious magical throne room surrounded by people who are darker skinned they're japanese but they're darker skinned and they're kind of old school we'll say fantasy level and there's a beautiful woman in front who welcomes says hello my groom welcome he's kind of shocked wonders if he's dreaming he ends up going into immediately sour man mode bows down and says uh, sorry for interrupting and he ends up talking to this woman this beautiful captivating woman and she reveals that her name is Aura Capra. She is the queen of the Capra Empire, or the Southern Continent. And she has summoned him with time-space magic. Because due to various worlds, the surviving members of her family have all died out and she is all that's left. And she needs to marry someone of her blood in order to keep the family going and to be her king. Now, first off, you're like, wait, wait a minute. How is he related to her? Because that doesn't work as... He is from Earth, and this is an alternate world where he's been summoned to. We find out more about the alternate world. It's a little different. Uh, it's kind of the kingdom they're in is kind of Caribbean, kind of Middle Eastern. It's got a lot of sand. It's really hot. Instead of horses, they use lizards, or they call that they have a different name. It's like dragon tanks or something. But doesn't matter. He's confused as to how he's related to her because he's from Earth. Well, she reveals a secret that the family has: is that five generations ago. The prince fell in love with someone that they weren't supposed to. And as opposed to breaking up, doing whatever, he used the family magic, which is time-space magic, to go to another world with his now wife. 
And the descendant of the prince and the mysterious person is Zenjiro. And that's why he has some differences. Like, he's actually tan-skinned as opposed to just the regular Japanese white. Which I kind of find fascinating that it's a, a character that's not the typical, you know, looks one color. It's something different. It's a minority. I kind of find that fascinating. But, again, I digress. So, she explains to him what she wants, and she wants a husband to be her king. Now, what does that mean to be the king? Well, this is a matriarch society, so his job is to give her a baby. And then, that's it. Because if she tried to marry someone else in the political climate, someone from the kingdom, well, they're going to want to impose their will upon her. They're going to want to take over for her. He has no reason to be there. He's just now going to be living here and his job is to essentially have sex with this beautiful woman and have kids and then kind of be her arm trophy. That's it. That's his entire role. And this works out because, like I said, she's not going to have someone who's going to be fighting her for the throne, someone who isn't going to be trying to take over, and someone who just has no real political gain to side with any other faction except her. And and this is a win-win for her. Now you think at this point, Zendro's like, wait, you could take over the country, you could do something. No! He's like, cool, I'll marry you, awesome! Because I, I don't have to work anymore, I can relax, I can just bring stuff from my world, and then I can just chill out, and I'll just be essentially a kept man. It's going to be great, amazing, wonderful. So, after some negotiating, and because, well, another thing is that this is a super sexy woman, he's like, fine, I'll do it, awesome, great, wonderful. So he ends up spending a month back in our world, Getting ready to go. Now, what does he do? He says goodbye to his family. He quits his job. He sells his house. He sells everything he possibly has to get as much money as he can to buy stuff to bring to their world. And he brings things which can actually work. Like, he buys a generator that's powered by water so he can run his stuff, like a refrigerator and fans. He brings glassware. He brings his TV because he needs his TV. He brings his camera. He brings all this stuff, and he ends up going to this other world after a month and say goodbye to his family because he doesn't know he's coming back. He poofs back there, and now he is the soon-to-be king. And what does he do? Well, first off, he ends up... Well, he ends up looking at all this stuff to make sure he's not bringing anything weird. And they're fascinated by some of this stuff because, like, one thing he brought was a bunch of marbles. And everyone's fascinated by this because it's, like, perfect crystal jewel work. That's amazing. It's, like, one of these marbles, thing you can get in most toy stores for, like, a buck for a hundred of them. One of them is worth... 30 gold pieces, which is quite a bit of money. So he has a lot of stuff which he could sell for money. Uh, he's, got t he's got TV, a laptop camera, other things, and he ends up doing all this stuff. He ends up writing things and doing things, just relaxing. But he has to be involved with his wife somehow. Like, for example, she starts lamenting to him about the finances of the kingdom. And one thing is that, unlike our world which relies on Arabic numbers. Fun fact, numbers are based on an Arabic writing system. Kind of cool. They use just straight-up writing. Like, they say, okay, this person owes 1,893, written as O-N-E-T-H-O, -E so it's long verse. So he does, okay, tell me the numbers. He has a putting it in a Excel document and creates a spreadsheet to see where the money's gone. He finds out, okay, these families are screwing you over. This one is doing this, and he's able to kind of strategize it. He wants to be a lazy bum, but he's being convinced to do other things unintentionally. Like, he's doing it to please his wife, because he actually marries her, and he's, like, going to be faithful and honest to her. There's people who try to throw themselves at him, and he's just like, I love, you know, it comes off kind of weak. Uh, in this political climate, you know, it, it, being devoted to his wife, is they, they, they underestimate him, and that works towards his favor. A lot of it is a lot of political scheming because you have a lot of other people in the politics trying to get ahead, learn what's going on. And that's a little fascinating aspect of this. It's also fascinating to see other little tidbits. Like, at one point he's showing his wife the marvels of his world because they get married in a very elaborate ceremony. And then when after they get married, he ends up buying her... Well, he brought something for her that they thought he was wearing. It's a nightgown for her various and things but he also bought her rings and he's like actually she wanted to marry him for political movement but she's falling in love with him because he's just so there he's so simple not simple but he's he's different he's emotional he's not uh there's no agenda there it's kind of fascinating it's a weird arranged marriage but as i said so he's showing her technology it's awesome 
and he takes a, a video of her. He wants to show her a video camera, and one of the fascinating things is that when he replays it, he hears her speaking her native language. And it turns out that there's a spell on him that's translating everything in his head. So he hears Japanese, he speaks Japanese, and they hear their language. But when he listens to it through a video, he's actually hearing the language of the world, which is very different than what he says. So it's kind of cool and engaging how that happens. It's kind of cool to see that. Eventually he starts learning the words, and it's weird how that's going in. But it is a bit engaging. Uh, you have a couple of other interesting characters, like there is the essentially the vizier, who's all for this. He's actually been helping out, finding people who's going to help the, the now king, Zenjiro, to train him a little bit. They say, okay, this person's got a, is married, loves his wife, so there's no issue there, and she'll end up just getting a seat as the tutor to you, to you to teach you about this world and also etiquette, because inadvertently, things that he does that's normal here is considered beneath him in his current position. So like him bowing to the servants, as totally in Hono. It's not saying thank you, it's kind of an insult, so he can't do that. It's hard to explain, but it's engaging and fun. I gotta say, and as an Izakai series goes, it's one of those ones that you're like, hey, this is pretty cool. A little weird, a little different, but it is very unique. I will say, I love the art style. I love the art style in this series. Uh, not just because there's another kingdom that shows up because it gets even more crazy because uh, his he's technically the heir to two kingdoms because he's yes he's the heir of the Capra kingdom because his great great grandfather was that but turns out his grandmother the person that he married and ran with is from the northern kingdom. And there's a whole fight between them. So they make kind of a weird arrangement. He makes a contract, which is totally like... Because he's a salary man. He knows how to do contracts. So he makes an absurdly crazy contract that he will never be able to breach. And the thing is that if... It's more likely that the Northern Kingdom will breach it. And if they breach it, they end up being penalized for it. But it's more likely if they try anything, they're going to breach it. Because there's no way in hell that he'll breach the contract. It's, it's really a, a creative way to do this. It's almost... Um, it's like a really different version to another manga series I want to review, and it's actually a light novel that I'm digging, How a Realistic Hero Rebuilt the Kingdom. It's very, there's a lot of paperwork and stuff, and it's just, it's kind of fascinating. It's very different than running your mill. I'm an Izakai character. I'm here. I'm going to marry you. Now I'm going to fight the dragon. Yay! No, it's the behind-the-scenes stuff. i got to say it's cool. and I, Like I said, I love the design work of the characters. I love that... It's very fleshed out. It's a little clean for my taste, a little bit at times. Um, what I mean by is it clean? It's it's there's no human error to it. There's no like things that make it unique. It is a little computery, especially the uh, shading. The shading kind of drives me crazy because the shading for the series is obviously computer generated. It's uh, I don't want to say patchworky, but it's like. Uh, yeah, it's patchworky. You could see it's like computer shaded. It was not. It's not as bad as uh, Zetsubo Sensei. I talked about that in the review for that. That I hated that shading because that looked terrible. This is a little bit better, but it's a little annoying. The shading style for this one. It's a little jarring. However, it's not a turn. I really do enjoy this series. I think it's well done. All the characters are very different looking. Uh, what else is there? Like Sinjiro has aspects of his character that look very different than the other characters and also his design work but when he's blending in when he's wearing the clothes of the world he fits in a unique way and all the characters do look different there's no real static characters in this series and i like that it's a political game the plot's great characters are great uh obviously the character that i totally go with is the vizier i think he's a fun alfred character who's trying to figure out the best things and he's actually there to help the queen. He's not there to be like, I'm going to undermine you. No, the person who's trying to undermine him is a rival family that wants to marry in, who's like the lead general of the dragon riders. Which are not dragons, they're just giant fucking Emoto dragon things. But, anyway. So, there's two volumes out right now. I would say, though, this is very mature. 
Now, what do I mean by mature? Well, let's be honest, even though it's kind of sanitized, you do see the wedding night. So, yeah. It's a lot of sexy time. A lot of... I don't want to say fucking, because it's, it's not like berserk, where it's like rapey. It's just kind of... It's nice. It's not Aori Yoshi nice, but it's it's okay. It's just... It's there. You just go with it. And it's a Slice of Life series. And generally, Slice of Life series, I'm a little more bleh with. But I really dug this one. Uh, will I continue reading it? I'm going to give it a chance for a while. Once it starts getting a little stale, I may drop it. But I'm going to keep it. So I'm going to have to recommend this as a ball from a friend. Definitely. It's a ball from a friend. Don't return unless offered Pocky. It's a good series. It's a solid series. Uh, just the issues with the shading and a couple other little things that are annoying with the the tropes those are the only things that are just kind of letting it down but it's still a really good series i really recommend it if you are someone who has patience for a series like this i think you'll get something out of it if you just want straight up action adventure you're not gonna be totally lost with this series but you're not gonna totally enjoy it. this is not like that time i got resurrected as a slime that's not as reborn as a vetting machine it's not that action pack this is more behind the scenes stuff it's very comical very funny a lot of fish out of water situations but don't take my word for it check it out read it let me know what you think if you agree with me or disagree with me is zanspirekin.com you can also email me spirekin at gmail.com or listen to your episodes at spirekin.com now that that's out of the way let's get to it shall we because i'm in a little bit of a hurry because I'm taking Greta out to see a sneak preview of a new film coming out that was created by Seth Rogen, or he worked on it, and we're talking about Good Boys. It looks pretty cool. I'll let you guys know how I think about it tomorrow, and let's get to the part you've all been waiting for. What am I talking about? I'm talking about that one, that only, the Yes, friends, that one and only, and I know that wasn't a super awesome one, but my throat's a little blah, so let's get to it, shall we? So, what is the Wheel of Manga? The Wheel of Manga, except no substitute, it's a Wheel of Fortune with ten slots on it. What I've done is I've assigned a manga tile to each of the ten slots. What we're going to do is we're going to spin the Wheel of Manga, whatever number it lands on, that's what we're reviewing the next episode of the Spark and Manga Review, episode 329. I'm kind of excited because we've got some really good series on here, some really weird series, and one which is a little... Kind of crazy. I'm surprised I haven't done it yet. So let's spin and see what we're reviewing the next episode. Shall we? Number nine. And in the next episode, we're going to be reviewing a manga which is about a tokusatsu character who smokes cigarettes out of his own tokusatsu mask. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about the sun fighter himself, Sun Red. A really weird, crazy series, which when I first found out, I thought it was insane. I'm kind of excited for that. So next episode, Sun Red. Stay tuned for that. I guess that's it for this episode. So with that in mind, this is your host, Zan, saying I'm Gonsville. Catch you next time. Read more manga.